GoFundMe has shut down Jose Alba. Now, an alternative site, Give, Send, Go, is hosting the campaign. Give, Send, Go has raised over $8 million for the truckers. It was a huge PR mistake by GoFundMe. Our platform is this booming. It's going to be the fight of my life, and I feel so humbled that God would use me and my brother and my family and our employees to take on this battle. And we're going to be standing by freedom no matter what. And now we'd like to welcome to CPAC Australia 2023, Heather Wilson and Jacob Wells, the co-founders of Give, Send, Go. Good afternoon. Hi. How are you guys doing today? All right, bring some energy this afternoon, wake you up a little bit. We've got an amazing story to tell you, but first off, I just wanna give a couple shout outs, a couple thank yous. Um, as you can tell, I don't sound like an Australian because I'm not from Australia, I'm an American. And since being here over the past couple of days, we have experienced some incredible hospitality from you guys. So um, we just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to Lindell and Kayla and Andrew, some of the putting on CPAC and doing an incredible job bringing people together to stand for freedom. And so we wanted to say thank you first and foremost to you guys. You've been incredible hosts to us and we value being here. Thank you so much. So in the United States, often we play this game when we're getting to know somebody. We say, let's play two truths and a lie. Have you ever played that before? Where someone gives two truth statements and one lie and everybody has to try to figure out what the lie is. So I'm going to give you two truths and a lie and we're gonna to try to figure out which ones are the truths and which ones are the lie. And so number one, Jacob and I are two of 12 siblings, big family. Second, truth or lie, could be that we are embroiled currently in a $300 million lawsuit in Canada. And number three, we are neo-Nazi white supremacists. Good. So, <laughs> any, anybody have any guesses? One, two, or three, any guess? Which one's a lie? Which, which one are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's go through them. So, so number one, um, Jacob and I are two of 12 siblings. We grew up in uh, New Hampshire in the United States. I am the second oldest, and he is number five, and we had a sister who's number three. Um, we still have her, but she is, <laughs> she, is uh, she helped found Give, Send, Go, and the three of us, about nine years ago, was watching what was happening on social media, what was happening with a site called GoFundMe, and it was rising up as a place for people to come and raise funds for what was important to them. And we thought, what a great idea. What a great idea. People, this is what we should be doing, coming together when someone has a need and taking care of it. As Christians, especially, we see that in the Bible, where, where the church would come together and when someone had a need, it was taken care of. And we said, Let's, what if we were to make a site like GoFundMe, but that didn't just focus on the fundraising. Now we understand money is important, but not just focus on the fundraising, but also sharing hope. Because a lot of times when people are fundraising on sites like GoFundMe or Give, Send, Go, it's because some tragedy has happened and they found themselves in a natural disaster or something going on that was unexpected and they needed these funds. And we said, let's create a platform that not only allowed people to raise funds for what was important to them, but that we could also share the hope that we know is found in the Lord while they were doing it. Little did we know that God was going to send us on the adventure of a lifetime. So number one, it is a true statement. We are two of 12 siblings. That's right. Wonderful family, six boys, six girls, terrific upbringing. So we've got truth number one, large family, siblings on this journey together. And we haven't killed each other yet. We're still here. We're doing it and, and doing it well, I believe. But number two was the, uh, the truth of we're embroiled in a $300 million lawsuit uh, with Canadian citizens up in Ottawa. You guys saw some of that video there about how Give, Send, Go stepped in in a, a critical moment in not just Canadian, yeah, Thank you. yeah Thank you. A, a huge moment. 
a huge moment where big corporations thought they knew better than average citizens on what to do with their money. And, and GoFundMe ended up shutting down that fundraising campaign for the truckers and, and actually saying initially that they were gonna take the money themselves and disperse it how they thought it should be dispersed. Absolutely incredible, the humorous of companies like this that have, have uh, marched unchecked for too long. But thankfully, Give, Send, Go was in the right place at the right time. And, and so, one of the things Heather mentioned was the, the reality of who Give, Send, Go is, is that we have a foundation and a belief in a God. And so, uh, our number two in this, in this $300 million lawsuit story, I'm gonna give you a little testimony behind it. So, about two months prior to the campaign for the truckers coming on board in that movement starting in January of 2022, our bookkeeper came to us and said, hey, you know what? Probably a good idea to, to up your insurance and, and make sure you have proper insurance on the books for claims and, and various things. And so we pulled out some extra, an extra policy to have for us. Two months later, the trucker campaign comes by and we're thrust into this national moment, international moment, 130,000 people giving to fund $13 million to the Canadian trucker movement. And what happens when there's a lot of money moving is oftentimes you get a bunch of attorneys that start looking uh, and saying, hey, what can we do to grab this money? And so immediately lawyers jumped on it and started litigating it, wrapping it up in the court systems. And initially, Give, Send, Go and myself, we weren't involved in that lawsuit. It was just something that the uh, Canadian attorney was, was fighting up there with, some, with, with the truckers in general. About six months later, we get a notice that the, this attorney up in Canada that's pushing this class action lawsuit now wants to add Give, Send, Go to the lawsuit, and even myself personally. And so we sat there and said, oh, wow, Look at this, we, we have this lawsuit coming to our doorstep, what are we supposed to do? And we were invited to go speak to Parliament, Canadian Parliament, about the trucker convoy, and got on and pushed back against the crazy narratives that they were pushing there, that there was a bunch of violence and, and that it was unruly and all of those things that we knew weren't true and that we saw and there was evidence for. And so we spoke back again to Parliament about those issues and the next morning I wake up to a text from a friend and, he sends me a Bible verse, and it's a, a Psalms, and it says, those that put their trust in the Lord, he will be their defense for them. And I was like, oh, wow, what an amazing verse in this moment in time where we need a defense. Here's this Bible verse. And so it was this massive amount of encouragement to us in, in this journey. We weren't on the lawsuit yet. It was just they were propositioning us to be on the lawsuit to the courts. And so fast forward two months later, and it's before the judge. And the judge says to the lead attorney and the plaintiff, sure, add, give, send, go, and Jacob Wells to the lawsuit. And so they did. And so all of a sudden, we're now added to this lawsuit, $300 million lawsuit, and I'm sitting there saying, well, wait a second, God, you, sent, you gave us this Bible verse and says you're gonna be our defense. What does, that, what does that mean in this moment? Like, what are we supposed to do here? Are we supposed to defend this ourselves? What's our response? And if any of you have ever been involved in litigation at all, if you don't respond to a lawsuit, you're found in default judgment. So that time clock starts ticking once you're notified of the lawsuit. And we were within a couple of days of being in default judgment because we said, you know what? No, God said he was going to defend us in this moment. We don't, we don't need to defend this. We're just going to let this ride. <laughs> and... And we're talking back and forth amongst our team and saying, okay, what's the right decision here? So we took a couple of days to get away and really go before God and say, what's your wisdom here? And as I'm away and just listening to some, some music running, there's this uh, worship song. It says, the battle belongs to the Lord. And I've studied the Bible, went to Bible college for a while. I didn't know where that phrase came from. So I opened up the Bible and said, where does, this, where does this verse come from? The battle belongs to the Lord. And actually, it comes from a very popular story in the Old Testament. You guys probably all know it here. It's the story of David and Goliath. This, this moment in time where the Israel people, they were under attack from the Philistines. And David, who's just living his life, doing his dad's business, bringing food to his brothers at the front lines, stumbles upon the scene and hears Goliath screaming and shouting and threatening God's people. And David said, wait a second, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna sit around 
and be quiet in this moment. I'm going to stand. And so David stands up to Goliath and he said, hey, the battle belongs to the Lord. But then he does something unique. He didn't just drop his sling and sit there and not do anything. He actually picked up some stones and he put them in his sling and he knocked this giant in the head to the ground and then he chops his head off. What was fascinating for us in that moment was, you know, no, the battle does belong to God, but he takes people standing in courage in moments to actually make a difference. And so at that moment, three days before we were going to be found in default for not responding to this lawsuit, it was like, no, you guys are supposed to stand in courage and you're supposed to defend this and you're supposed to attack back. You're not going to sit down. And so we got in contact with a lawyer that um, that had been reaching out to us and had wanted to represent us up there. And we get on a Zoom call with him and we're talking questions back and forth about the whole case. And one of the questions, as you would imagine, is, well, how much is this going to cost? Because oftentimes today, lawfare is a real thing. They try to bleed you dry by suing you to death, stuff like that. And so we asked the question, how much is this going to cost? And he came back, well, you know, it's probably going to be a quarter million dollars over the next couple of years. You know, this is probably what it's going to cost you. It's like, okay, all right, well, you know what? This is the journey we're on, and, you know, God's got this. We, you know, this is the step of faith. This is the moment of courage again that, that the, the journey of life brings you to. We get off the call with him, and three hours later, I get an unsolicited phone call from an insurance company that we had pulled a policy out two months prior to the trucker convoy. And unbeknownst to us at that moment, they just called us up and said, hey, we've been reviewing this claim that you have, and we want to settle with you for it, and it's, uh, we've got a check here for $260,000 to pay you. Three hours unsolicited. You want, to t- you want to talk about the providence of God in a moment? This is an incredible thing. So we, we stand and we call people to courage because, one, we have a God that stands b- behind us and with us in those moments. And so that's the story. It's the unfolding story of this lawsuit in Canada, and we're excited to be a part of this battle and to call people to that stance of courage, living in a world standing for truth against the Goliaths of this age. So truth number two, we are in a $300 million lawsuit, but God's got the battle. So, so let me address the elephant in the room, number three, which is the lie. But we've heard from many people that we've talked to this weekend. They say, oh my goodness, We've been hearing about Give, Send, Go and how you are a, you fund neo-Nazis and white supremacists. And I go, huh, that's awesome because you know what? When they have to start throwing around terms like that, it means they have nothing else to say about you, right? Like if they actually had something about us that they could drag us through the mud, they would have something to say. But these are the terms they throw when they have nothing else to say. So they, they hope to scare you. Well, what, what Jacob and I have realized really early on in this journey of Give, Send, Go is that we can either live in fear or we can live courageously. And that is like every single one of you in this room. And this is our challenge to every single person that has showed up at CPAC Australia this year is that you can either live in fear or you can live courageously. And both of those options are contagious. We saw what happened when COVID hit and our governments tried to tell us to live in fear. What happened? We all became fearful. And then the people around us became fearful. And then it was this whole epidemic of fear because it's contagious. And Jacob and I looked as we, we started off Gifts and Go as a platform just to share hope with people. We didn't know that we were going to be in this place of standing for freedom, being called white supremacists, neo-Nazis. We didn't know that this is the direction we were headed in, but I wouldn't change a minute of it because it has taught us to be fearless. And as we step out and be courageous, What we want more than anything is for our story to help you be courageous. And then what's going to happen is that your story is going to make the people around you be courageous. And then things will start to change because when people decide to be courageous, it is contagious. And that is what's so exciting about talking about all, talking to so many of you this weekend is to hear your stories of courage, your stories of in the battle, taking a stand, even when the world around you is yelling what sometimes sounds louder than the truth. We know the truth. We stand courageous on the truth. Stand courageous people in Australia, people from CPAC. Stand for truth. 
Be courageous. It will be contagious. We are not neo-Nazi white supremacists. We, are, we believe God created everybody equal, that he loves us all. He has plans for us. Now, we do allow campaigns on Give, Send, Go that we disagree with but we're not funding them. We've heard people say, oh, you funded the truckers. Guess what? We didn't fund the truckers. None of our money went to the truckers. We don't fund things on Gifts and Go. People come on, they create a campaign, and then their friends and family fund it. And we have chosen to stand and allow people, even that we might disagree with, to have a platform. And that's great news for each one of you. Because if it was up to the rest of the world, they would be silencing you because they disagree with you. But we're going to stand with you and allow you the freedom to have a voice, the freedom to fundraise for the things that are important to you. And we're so thankful to be available. Right. And, and we've got seven minutes left, it says, on the, the timer. We could keep talking or we could just leave you with the, a final thought, which is um, we're gonna continue to stand, like Heather said, in this fight for freedom. Last night we were at the, the gala and the tagline, the slogan for it was the freedom and hope dinner, right? It just ties so neatly in with who Give, Send, Go is, a platform for freedom and a platform for hope. And that's what we deliver. So we're gonna leave you with that final thought Give, Send, Go is going to continue to be a platform for freedom and hope here in Australia for you and for people around the world as we continue to push back and stand for truth in a moment where, uh, where many things seem shaken. We're going to continue to stand strong. Yeah. No, please ask. We love questions. That's a great, great, great question. Great question. So we yeah. do have a couple. This is something. So we take very seriously. Right. And it's not an easy place to be in, right? Because there's a lot of things that we don't like. We do not like hate speech. We do not like terrorism. Well, so there is a terror watch list. If you are on it and you are not allowed to use the banking systems in your country, then you will not be able to fundraise on Gifts and Go. We make sure that you are a real legitimate person with the access to banking in your country. And so somebody without that banking ability is not going to be able to fundraise on Gifts and Go. We have a verification team that verifies every single person that starts a campaign, who's going to be receiving the money, and that they are a legitimate person who does have the right to have a bank account. And if you have a bank account, that means the banks have found you worthy to move money around in your country. And so there are a couple of things that we do not allow on Gifts and Go, though. And, and, the, and again, we, we wrestled through this. Number one, we don't allow murder. Now, let's laugh because that's obvious. We would not allow murder. But but in saying that we don't allow the ch killing of unborn children because we believe that is murder. And so go somewhere else if you want to kill children. We are going to protect children with everything in us because it is one of the most important callings that we have. God says he knits us together in our mother's womb and we are going to protect children. And then number two is that we don't allow child abuse. Again, seems pretty obvious. Well, when you let a child chop off parts of their body because they think they're an animal or a different sex or whatever craziness, that is child abuse because as parents, we are supposed to be protecting our children. And so we do not allow transitioning of children. If you wanted to raise money for a surgery for your child, you cannot come to Give, Send, Go and raise money because we are going to protect our children. Right. Any other questions? We have four minutes. Might as well use it. Anybody? Right there. Right. Yeah, no, it's a great question. So the, there's actually some legislation that was passed um, a decade or so ago in the U.S. It's called the anti slap legislation. And it had to do with free speech activities. And, and what they wanted to do was um, restrict people from frivolous lawsuits that were intended to prevent people from engaging in freedom of speech activities. So what was happening was people would be out doing something freedom, freedom of speech oriented, and then they were getting lawfared by people just suing them. And so it was preventing people from wanting to step out 
in free speech spaces because of fear of just getting sued and having to deal with the burden of, of, suit, uh, of lawsuits. And so America actually um, put forth some legislation called anti-slap legislation to prevent lawsuits like that. Well, Canada adopted similar legislation uh, about 10 years ago as well. And under that, we've submitted a motion because this was clearly free speech demonstration. Um, you're not a democracy if you don't allow protest. It's fundamental. And, and so this was a free speech protest. We're submitting a motion right now to have it dismissed on those grounds. It looks very promising to us. We'll see how, how it works out from there. Um, we're also submitting a motion to a, a change of venue because right now the, the judge that is overseeing the case actually sits in court in Ottawa, the city in the zone where the trucker protest happened. So there's a little bit of a conflict of interest between him and members of the court and his staff who were engaged in witnesses to the event. So we're looking for a change of venue as well to get a, 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 clearer, a clearer court system. So those are a couple of things that we're in the process of, and we're going to play it out over the next couple of years and see how it goes. And just so that you know what we're being charged with, um, <laughs> right. we are being charged with the intent to create nuisance. Now, if I knew that I could sue people who were a nuisance to me for $300,000, <laughs> I would be the most wealthy person in the, in the world. So it's very, very frivolous, this lawsuit. Um, and we're just going to continue walking it out. Um, and, and see where it goes. We, we don't know the future, but we know none of this takes God by surprise. Right. Any last, we got a minute and a half left. Oh, oh. right there, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 So how would you handle someone who wants to fundraise to make income and say we're unjustly deprived of the banks? Right. No, that's a great question. We've actually worked with several individuals. I personally have been debanked. Pretty incredible. Shortly after the uh, the trucker convoy, my bank came to me and said, "You're out of here." I said, "Well, wh well, why? Let's get you know. Let's have a conversation." Nope. See you later. You're done. Um, pretty incredible moment, and, uh, but what we're doing as a platform to defend against things like that, uh, we, we've created redundancies in our platform. Multiple payment systems, multiple ways to transmit money, multiple uh, server, you know, server databases and backups. So we have, we have many different systems in place to continue to facilitate the movement of money for people um, and, and, and negotiate, have conversations with people that are in difficult situations and suggest. One of the things that we've even looked at is building a bank ourselves as we continue to build the infrastructure. We're gonna to continue to dig deeper so our foundation is stronger um, to prevent stuff like this from happening in the future. So we're on that path and we're thankful that so many of you have walked alongside us in that and continue to use our service so that we can continue to dig deep and become the infrastructure that's needed to prevent that stuff from happening. And we will be out out in the foyer. So if you have questions, you want to come talk to us, we are over our time now. We had all this time and now we have none. And so we will be out in the foyer. Come talk to us. Um, we'd love to talk to you and continue supporting platforms like Gifts and Go, other platforms that are standing for freedom because it's people like you supporting us that have made us the top fundraising platform for freedom. We're in 86 countries around the world. In Australia, we are proud to say you're one of them. Thank you guys. Yeah.